under God, under God indivisible, 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 with liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. <laughs> Okay, okay, Kristen, looks like we have Chuck, Ed, John, Harry Van Meter, Julie, Frank, and Tom Collard. Yes. All right, minutes. Oh, minutes we've got, minutes. Sorry, we've got addition or deletions of agenda items as well. Oh, okay, yeah, I dumped all the way to even with it in front of me, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> um, this is Kristen, and one addition is there was an email sent to you all that item from Cindy Legg um, regarding she was inquiring about her sewer situation following the demolition of her building. Julie had mentioned that she might be interested in calling in tonight via an email, um, but regardless, she would like to have some updates on that. Um, and I have another addition is an update on Elizabeth Gibson's position. I contacted the VLCT lawyers regarding what is required for advertising that and how the best way to go about that is. Um, also a message from Ed that came through, which I forwarded to the board, uh, the quote from Countryside. And this is within Julie's realm. It wasn't officially on the agenda, which it should have been, but tax rate discussion within the treasurer's memo section. And I otherwise have no deletions. Sounds good. Is that so. Bob Jones that just called in? Yes, it is. Hi, Bob. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Okay, so now we're on the minutes. Approval of the minutes. I think the date's wrong. Yes. Very astute observation. <laughs> I know how that can easily happen. Yeah. So I did fix that. It is the final minutes that we are approving would be for June 30th, 2020. Okay. Right, John? I did. Yes. Okay. I didn't see anything else. Did anybody else see anything with the minutes? No, I believe they're correct. Okay. That sounds like a motion to me. Could be. Right, Chuck? Okay. Yeah, do we have here a second be. on that motion? I'll second that. Okay. Is there any more discussion on the minutes? All in favor, Chuck? Yes. Ed? Yes. John? Yes. Bob? Yes. Okay, approved. Any pre-requested? So I had had, this is Kristen, I had had Cindy Legg um, down as pre-requested, but seeing as she's not logged in, no pre-requested appearances. Okay. Any announcements? One announcement, this is Kristen again. Um, just one announcement came from the town clerk's office that I thought would be interesting to share in our town, in our meeting minutes that there was a bill passed effective July 1st, 2020 stating that riding of ATVs on all public roadways is now illegal except if the ATVs are owned by the town. Further helmets and valid trail access decals, also known as TAD, are required beyond one's own land, and the farming exemption also no longer exists on public highways. Okay. And they do so need an insurance, you need an insurance card. And to the best of my knowledge, the only the only road that we have open is from Shorty Stones up to to get on to uh, McCormick's trail up there, correct? That's the only road we opened in the town for ATVs. Okay. 
Bob, do you remember that? <sighs> well, how are you describing it, Mike? The only road that we have open for ATVs that they're allowed to drive on are from from uh, Shorty Stones up to up to uh, uh, yeah. Brook Road and then on to the McCormick access there. I believe so. I believe so, but we'd we'd have to look look it up to be sure. Right. So in order for to, to drive on any roads, they would have to, we would have to allow that with a with a motion. That we'd have to deem the roads that they were allowed to drive on. Correct. That's the way I read it. Yes, I believe you're correct. Yeah. So if no trespassing, uh, even farm vehicles. What's that, Frank? Um, is this, this is a, Julie, I mean, um, Kristen, is this a state law that went through on the ATVs? Yes. Then you'd have to con contact the state to see if your exemptions are valid at any, anymore on the public, for public highways. It, it was spelled out in the law, unless you've already deemed the roads. You have to, you have to deem them. So, unless we have okay. any pushback from the ATV people, then that's, then it is what it is. So, okay. What else do we got, do uh, Kristen? That's all I have for announcements, Mike. Okay. And zoning administrators report. Do you have anything from Jonas? Yes. Um, also, just real quick, um, Deb joined the meeting. Deb Hawkins is also present. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I do have something from Jonas. Um, okay. okay, so uh, from Jonas Rosenthal, zoning administrator, this is Kristen sharing on his behalf. He says he has two other meetings tonight in Castleton. He will not be able to attend. Please read Steve Schaub's email regarding the signs, billboard art. No new permits except for another swimming pool last week. We'll be in the office on Wednesday morning. Thank you, Jonas. Um, and does the board have interest in me reading the message from Steve Schaub? Yes, please do. So the message reads, hi, Jonas, I just wanted to let you know that I'm working on a letter that covers many of the points we touched on in our conversation the other day regarding the artworks in the field across from our house. Please feel free to share our conversation with the board, but I will definitely have a more thorough follow up in writing describing that these works are artworks for temporary display rather than signs. Cheers, Stephen Schaub. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on the zoning administrator's report? Uh, Kristen, I had also sent you the um, the site uh, the sketch plan sample. When did you send that, Harry? Uh, I sent that this morning. It was the last thing that we had um, on the actually actually the uh, application, the zoning permit application, was approved by the select board at your last meeting, but with the condition that there's a, a sketch plan example yep. shown and on that one page that calls for a sketch plan example, we've included it. So I sent that to you by email this morning. If you wouldn't mind Harry sending that again, all I got from okay. you this morning was the ad for the open position. So okay. if you wouldn't mind sending that along, I'd be happy okay. to forward it to the rest of the board. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Planning Commission, do you have anything to? Uh, no, I don't really have a uh, report uh, this week other than um, I did send Chris in the, uh, uh, the advertisement that is now on our website okay. for the open position to fill um, 
Uh, the vacancy left by Eric Mack. That's all I had. Okay. <coughs> so Keith isn't called in yet, so we'll move right along to a uh, assessor's report. No report was submitted to me, Mike. Okay. Is um, um is Keith live? Mike, I'm here. Oh, you're here already. All right. Well, let's go right ahead then, Keith. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I didn't send anything to Kristen today because it just completely slipped my mind till I was done work. So. Um, we've been right on the switch road pretty steady for two weeks and we're very near completion about putting the rock down anyway. So, um, that's going very well because we've been able to gravel right tight behind the bulldozer and it's just, you know, a much more, much more forgiving to the people that are trying to drive on it. If we've got some gravel on it. So, um, we're just above the culvert above Ken Norman's and headed for the New York line. My hope is, I hope we'd be done today, but it looks like tomorrow will be the day we finish putting the rock down. So, uh, once we're done there, we'll be moving on to, well, we may go help Rupert for a while and then have them come back with us. I think, uh, Riley Williams is going to do a shot and he will load us right in his pit right in spruce gum there so and he's going to do that at some point next week so we may wait for that rock to uh so we'll just save some rental money that's all if we'll load it and we'll take it away right there so that's where we'll get the material for bet's bridge but we've still got some culverts to change and some preparation work up there before we're really ready to roll anyway so that's what we've been working on and where we're headed uh I've heard nothing on our backhoe, uh, so I don't know what the status of that is at this point. So, okay. Now you said you're putting gravel on this this slate. You're putting on the switch road. Where are you getting that from? We got some gravel. We're getting it from Peckham's Pit in Salem, where Rupert's been getting it, just because that was the only place we really had volume enough to bother going after. My plan is to okay. still cap it with uh, with the Galusha stone, but that that road is closed, and you know there's no real access there at this point. So we'll yeah. buy Understood. enough to put our first shim on and get the rock covered, and then we'll cap it with a gradable surface of uh, the Crusher Run from out there. So okay. So how far toward Bush Corey did you go? uh how far we started at just west of the box culvert by the briar hill okay, intersection all right that that road and, that goes south right there was always considered bush quarry so that's what yeah, i we, always knew it as so okay i'm not sure where bush quarry was but yeah we're we're well, halfway between that and the box culvert, right where after you cross the culvert and start to grade up the hill, I blended right in there and started because we rocked okay. around the box culvert when we installed that anyway. So that's already pretty good shape. And uh, we've gone, well, I skipped across where you and I met the other day because that's all rock uh -huh. anyway. And so right. we, we picked up there and started again back by the small cul culverts that they wanted to turn the water to. And yeah. we went fairly reasonably thin down through there. It was really not a major mud issue at that point. It just gives us some more ditch line and gets us away from the bedrock with the grader. And, you uh -huh. know, now was the time to do it. So we went down there and then once we get down towards uh, where Kibling's driveway is, where it gets muddy down over to the New York line, we pick it back up and, you know, the, the quarry guys had some issues. We were down to one truck for a day and a half and uh, a few things. So we're, we're rolling along there and it's going well and we're getting it covered. So like I say, the rock will be done tomorrow. We probably will 
get some more gravel on it the rest of the week and it'll be we'll be in good shape there have our driveways all done and so on and so forth we've got i don't know one issue there ken norman's going to need a culvert i guess just because he's got substantial ditch there to access his horse pasture we'll work something out there and, and take care of that and uh, the rest of them are coming out pretty good so okay so we didn't have to move any of that material with our dump trucks no, nope, it was all brought 35 or 40 ton at a time right to the can't beat it, right huh? to the road. Can't no, can't beat it, Mike. You want to we have a good bulldozer and you want one because when they dump you got to be ready. So, especially with two of them running, I was getting five loads an hour. It was averaging when we had two trucks running. So, that's about all you can keep pushed off ahead of it. We rolled right out through there last week. So, that's excellent. That's yeah, excellent. It really gets it down, and you know, it, yeah. now we're down to one truck, but we're also working right off the end of the quarry road. So even one truck's coming, coming pretty heavy. So pretty steady, perfect. Yeah, yeah, well, we're making great. good Thank progress. That's the main thing. I really appreciate those guys helping us out. I mean, it's a benefit to all, but it's it's great to save us on that tail. Oh, absolutely. You can't cannot beat it. You know, we're not renting an excavator to load it we're not transporting it in our trucks and you know they're easily two and a half times our truck every time they dump probably so it's, uh, so i wish they'd go all over town but they're a little cautious about that so mm -hmm. they'd love to get rid of the rock but they don't they don't want to drive on to 153 so yeah Go ahead, Chuck. Uh, I stopped and uh, spent a little time there this morning, uh, talked with uh, Keith, and uh, I'm pretty impressed with the uh, material that's uh, going down. There's no major slate chunks in this. This is all nice material. Yeah, that once in a while, a plan comes together, and it did this time. We were looking for it. He was looking to get rid of it. He hit it hard for us when he blasted, so it, it is. It's all nice fractured rock. You can make a consistent lift and, and go with it because you're not forced to go deeper than you really want to and haul more material because the size of the rock is controlling what you can put down for a you know, for a lift. So with this stuff, you can uh, you can work pretty good. I don't think I've sorted half a dozen chunks that I thought were too big out of everything we've done in that whole stretch of road, which is, well, it's like 1.2 from Briar Hill to the New York line miles. And, you know, we've done 90% of it. So we could say it's gonna be another mile of road that's completely upgraded, so. Excellent. Anybody else got any questions or comments for Keith? Kristen? I just have one quick question, Keith. Did you ever hear anything from the state about the roadside mowing on Route 30? Yeah, I did. Interestingly enough, uh, I contacted them down there and they don't know who's going to mow it because they haven't <laughs> hired anybody yet. So. Don't get your hopes oh, up that it's going to happen anytime soon. So Okay. <clears throat> and that doesn't mean somebody won't show up there next week either. But it's, uh, they, uh, you know, they currently didn't have anybody hired. And Dave Hosley has done it in the past and was not interested this year. So it was, uh, they've just got caught up in the COVID and haven't moved on from that yet. So. Uh, the last word was that they don't really know what's happening. So, and yet they have a really nice mowing tractor sitting at the shop down there and uh, <laughs> not mowing any roadsides with it. So All right. it's, a, it's an odd situation, but I, so I wouldn't get my hopes up. It would happen anytime soon there or on 133. Uh, so uh, this is Ed. I did hear a rumor the other day that there would be no roadside mowing in the state of Vermont this summer. Wow. They wouldn't come right out and tell me that, Ed, but it sounded like that's 
where they might be headed. So I was afraid of. Well, I heard the other day, this is Chuck again. I heard the other day that they're mowing Route 7 uh, by the Welcome Center and all those junctions. Well, this is Kristen. Thank you, Keith, for checking into that. Okay. Any more? No, hearing no more questions for Keith. Thank Hi. you, Keith. Hi, this is Bob. Um, I had one yeah. thing for. It's actually I don't know if it, it entails Keith, but it's actually for the board. Um, uh, one of the landowners on the Betts Bridge Road, uh, Pat Morello. He um, he's owned the property for I don't know forty five years. Uh, it's basically uh, across from. Uh, across from Waite Sawmill and, and headed out toward, uh, toward 153. Um, okay. he, he's met with Keith about some of the road work they're going to do up there, and he's excited about it and really sees the, the value in it. Um, but he did have a question for me. That's the reason I was late to the meeting. But um, he's going to, over the years, it's nothing that happened uh, recently, but his... Uh, Corner stakes have been um, been uh, removed uh, when we replaced the culvert by the old Daisy Warners there. One of the his stakes were taken out there, and the stake up on the other end by Waite Sawmill has been been taken out and removed and and uh, during ditch cleaning. And he wanted to know if the if the town would. Uh, would uh, reimburse him for the cost of uh, hiring somebody to come and put the stakes back in. Um, I, I told him I didn't think we wanted to set a precedent with that, and I was pretty confident that the stakes were in the town right away when uh, they were installed and uh, during ditch cleaning and replacing that culvert is when they had to get removed, so I didn't think that we were really responsible to... Uh, put the bill to put them back in uh bob that this one corner up by tim waits end that stake is still there we've never compromised that i was not aware of another one down at um I, between i'm pretty and sure it was on that embankment that had when we replaced the culvert at daisies it had to get uh, get pulled out because it was all part of the, the dig there? I think the one he's talking about is one that was uh, at the next culvert. Jordan oh, down by Eric's? Yep, that yeah, very well could be. When I was moving Phil after we had dug there, a corner stake rolled out of the pile. So I yep. dug it up at some point in time, and I told him that. And I told him where it had to come from because it was in a pile. And then he said his deed went to the corner of the head wall on the old culvert. Okay. Yep. It so, does. He owns a portion of that field, that hay field, a sliver of it. Correct. Yep. And, and he said he knew where it had been and he thought he could be reasonably close. And I believe it's right at the wing wall of our new culvert. Right, we didn't move the brook, that's for sure. So We didn't move the brook, and we centered the new culvert on the old culvert. Of course, the new one is considerably bigger. but um, So we did disturb that one, but I don't think we've compromised any of his other stakes. Right, right. He said the one up by Waite Sawmill was in a, a, a pile of, uh, of wood chips from chipping the the roadside or something. So he was concerned that he didn't know if it was accurate or not. Didn't know if it had been, been moved there or, or whatever, I guess it looked, looked pretty well disturbed around it. But I guess from what you're saying, it pretty much dug around the state. No, we, we didn't even get out to it. You know, okay. we left it there. I tied an orange okay. ribbon around it so we could find it. And we have not touched that stake at all. I, I mean, okay. I can't, voice my opinion that it's in exactly the right spot right because he's just off to the side of it there's a tree there with a fence corner in it. and he seems to think 
it may belong over at that tree. But if that one has been moved, it's nothing that the town crew did. Right, right. No, and and I just I just told him, you know, and you know, I couldn't imagine that we would want to get involved with uh, with that because we it might spiral out of control and and uh, you know the fact that those stakes were put in the town right away where we need to to uh, maintain and stuff and you know that they, they should have been should be moved back uh, you know at least to the edge of the right of way yeah. so yeah. anyway well yeah, i'm just putting it out there he asked me to bring it up to the board yeah we, Frank, we I, had the uh, same discussion th this is frank could i weigh in a little bit okay frank what you got hello uh since he's uh, since he's talked to you guys about this the uh prudent thing to do is to advance the conversation to the league and cities the town's insurance company an adjuster might be assigned to deal with them uh on this on, and do the background on all the on on this if it's a negligence thing you know which isn't intentional then the insurance policy might pay for it without a deductible. This would be a, 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 a settlement type of thing. So the insurance company would be a good one to contact nonetheless to find out, to notify them uh, because then you're not, wouldn't pay out the money. The insurance company would pay it out um, potentially. Okay, thank you for your comment, Frank. We'll take that into consideration. Okay, Bob, so I don't know, as far as, I, I agree with your stance right there, Bob, that, you know, the stakes must have obviously not been correctly installed if if we did it. I don't, I can't believe we went that far off the road. And sometimes those old roads where they put the stakes aren't really correct because they always said stone wall to stone wall, et cetera, but it doesn't always work out that way because it's a full three rod right away when when they get survey in it, it it doesn't always turn out to be that way so i i, I agree with your stance bob yeah i don't Anybody else i don't want think to weigh in on? major factor i was left with a good feeling that he was happy which well, i was concerned at one point because we Oh, had a lot of words with him when we did the one at Jordan and Rose Smith's and then the next one up by Daisy Warner's lot. Both times he was very concerned and not real cooperative with us. And, and this time he just was more asking to be aware of what was going on and get an explanation, which is certainly reasonable. So um, he was, I felt pretty content when I left there today. So. Jesus. Okay. This is this is Bob. Uh, yeah, Keith. I s spoke with him. He said he he was very happy that you met with him and described what the plan was up there, and and he was uh, you know it seemed all positive, and he was fine there. And then as the conversation went on, he just uh, basically wanted to know if we would uh, pay to have the the stakes you know, resurveyed and reset there. And I told him I did not feel that we wanted to set any kind of precedent like that. So I guess we'll move on from there. Right. Okay. Anybody else have anything for Keith? Okay. Thank you, Keith. Assessors? Any, any news from the assessors? This is Kristen, yep. and there was no official assessors report submitted to myself, but perhaps someone else hey, this is john i left a message yeah. for karen today and uh i forgot it was tuesday which she isn't on her schedule but i haven't heard anything okay now debs Deb, do you want to read your memo or do you want Kristen to read it? I'm 
I she must have left the building. I guess you can, Kristen. Okay. Um, this is Kristen, and this memo was submitted from the town clerk to the Pollitt Select Board regarding comments and concerns for the Select Board meeting on July 14th, 2020. First bullet. Oh, Deb, are you good with me reading it? Yeah, you can still read it. I, could, I couldn't get them on mute quick enough, but you can keep reading. Thanks. Okay. First bullet reads, we, the town offices, are asking the board to formally slash publicly support the requirement for the use of masks in order to enter into any town buildings. We already require this, but feel that the backing of the board would solidify the importance of this measure to protect all. The Londonderry town offices have had to close temporarily due to a researcher who had been into the office testing positive for COVID-19. Also, as you may already be aware, there is a growing outbreak right down the road in Manchester. We have been diligent in following through with our protocol to protect ourselves and the community at large. And as we approach the primary election, it becomes even more critical to remain united in our goal of helping to prevent, spread, prevent the spread of this illness. Voters will have several options to vote if they choose to come to the polls on election day, in their car, outside at a voting booth, and inside if they wear a mask. I have discussed this with the elections division, Will Senning, who agrees that offering outside voting to accommodate those who choose not to wear a mask or simply do not want to be inside the building would be appropriate. Second bullet, that being said, we are well over 200 absentee ballot requests, which is unprecedented for us in any election. We are working diligently to process the requests on the day they arrive to our office. Third bullet, the office is as busy as it has ever been and we hope to continue to accommodate it in the best way possible. Third bullet, I have canceled, or sorry, fourth bullet, I have canceled the order with Royal Glass for the glass insert in my door. I was having to do too much follow up on when they would be installing and not getting any feedback. I told them we had to make other provisions as it was taking too long. Have a wonderful evening, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, respectfully submitted Deb. Okay, thank you, Deb. I talked to Deb a little bit about about making a formal uh, motion on on manda mandating masks in the town buildings, and I wonder how the rest of you board feel about it. I guess we'll just go right down. Ed, how do you feel about it? Um, yeah, probably better. Do you need a motion or just a just a verbal? I can't really hear you very well. Um, any better now? Yeah. Um, a motion or just a that we all agree that uh, that now mass should, mass should be required. Okay. I think a motion. Yeah. I John, do you do you feel a mass should be required by to enter any town building? Yes, while the state of emergency is on in Vermont, I think it's good okay. good practice. Okay. Chuck. I'm good with a mask. Yeah. How about you, Bob? I definitely agree. Okay. So let's let's put that in the in this form of a motion just so we have an official vote on it but this is. okay so this is some this is Kristen if Kristen. I may I think that the motion would be of benefit to to <laughs> nicely done Jack. um would it would be of benefit to con or just to clarify that the mandate of wearing a mask slash facial covering that covers the nose and the mouth while in mm -hmm. town buildings um, because having working in a public space in Manchester, there's definitely a lot of interpretation of mask wearing. So I think as being as clear as possible would be of benefit. That's just my, my two cents. And, and like John said, during the state of emergency. Well, you know, I may take that back because this will only be for a month longer and it'll cover the primary, but won't cover the general election in November. Okay. The state of emergency will be off by then. So I, I guess I'll take that back and not include that in the motion. Right, and then then we can and, rescind it when when we feel the the threat is gone. 
Okay. Yes. Do you want to make that motion then, or John, or since you're? I'll make the to require the mask. Okay. Require the masks defined such as Kristen said. Excellent. Thank you. Who would like to second that motion? I'll second it. This is Chuck. Okay. Chuck will second it. All in favor of that motion? Ed? Aye. Yes. John? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Bob? Yes. Okay. Motion approved. Anybody else have any questions or comments about Deb's report? Okay, we'll move right along to the treasurer's report. Hi. Good evening, Julie. Um, there's two warrants to be signed. The payroll was 861684 and the accounts payable was 397909. The total general fund was 1545288, highway 2355469 and wastewater 58836. I I guess I can pause there and we can deal with the warrants and then move through the rest. Okay. Has everybody had a chance to look at the warrants? Does somebody want to make a motion on the warrants? I'll make a motion to accept the warrants with uh, the Nortrex, which was mentioned that we weren't paying the part of the backhoe repair. Is that correct, Julie? Right. I only paid the part. There were three invoices oh, sorry, parts, and then one invoice for the repair, and I didn't include the repair. Thank you for that. I'll make a motion to accept the warrants with that condition okay. of the Nortrex. All right, Ed, or somebody want to second it? Go ahead. Yeah, Ed, Ed, Ed nodded. <laughs> so he'll, he'll make the second. Any more discussion? All in favor, Ed? Aye, yes. John? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Bob? Yes. Okay, approved. Thank you. Okay, this is hey, Julie. Julie again. Um, the state has issued education <laughs> rates. Uh, the non homestead rate for Paula, or well, the non homestead rate is 1.5312, and Paula's homestead rate is 1.3872. I've sent out fiscal year end information to the auditor and I've communicated with him a couple of times and he is planning to come down at the end of July. Um, and his plan was to re review anything that he might need. Um, he, he was interested in, in the, in an effort to not be in our office for a long time and potentially taking, boxes of stuff with him and then returning them at a later date. I don't know how you guys feel about that. I, I mean, he's in a position where he needs to be responsible for stuff. So I, I really don't feel that, that we should have a danger. We have a longstanding relationship with him anyway. So I'm good with it. Okay. Um, I was able to set up today a view only, um, I called it membership, but, uh, an account for view only for our banking institution so that you guys can review all account activities, um, including statements. 
And I think maybe the easiest way to get this information to you is just to set up one-on-one -on -one phone calls and then I can give you guys the login information and walk you through the process over the phone um, because it's every, every new device that's used to sign in, you're going to need a passcode, which is set up to go to my cell phone. Um, and so it would probably be easier if we could just go through it together one-on-one. -on -one. And I put a notice in my phone to send out emails tomorrow to set up time with all of you to do that. Okay, excellent, thank you. Sure. Um, and then the last thing I have is wastewater rates. Okay. So we had, we had that paperwork pretty much laid out. So what does that turn into for a rate? I don't, we, I don't have it in front of me right now. So I had set everything up. Um, Kristen, can you make me a co-host and I can share my screen? Oh, I think I can do a share screen. Um, it's asking I can change the host, make you the host? Um, can you make me a co-host? No. No, okay. Um, well, sorry. Hang it's okay. Um... Uh, I'm happy to make you the host, and then when you're done, you can make me the host again. Okay. Why not? All right, you're the host now. Cool. <laughs> so, I'm so excited. Um, let's see. Share screen. Can you guys see this now? No. No. Okay. <laughs> about, how about now? Yeah. There we go. There we go. Julie Shan screen. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um so the way I had it set sent to you was with the um wastewater budget um, with um, Jill had said that she needed a thousand dollars more moving forward right Mike right so I had set that up with that additional funds included and then the one loan payment that comes from wastewater and then that leaves us here and then I had filled in everything else and then I had done the math to be that we would keep the 764. So that's where this number came from. The 17,910 is what it would take to transfer into the wastewater fund to maintain the rate. So if you didn't want to maintain the rate and we eliminated that number, then that would change that. And then um, let me just get my calculator going here. So we would need to raise the 113,410 on 125 units, it'd be $907. So where did we get the 17 that we transferred from? That was me mathing, maintaining the rate. Okay, so we have, we were, we're $17,000 short to maintain that rate. Right. $18,000 short. Right. So we go from 764 to 910. 
but there's there's really no way we can get that money. Is there? There's, I mean, there's some money saved in the the wastewater account, but the the recommendation was that we didn't pull any money out of there to to maintain the rate like we had in the past. Correct. So that was what they had recommended kind of when we set our original rate last year. I don't know. I don't have that file in front of me as to what, because he had worked out, um, he worked out numbers as far as the, like the pot, the um, percentage of household income based on pallets but it really isn't i didn't feel like it was an accurate reflection of necessarily west pollet village household income mm -hmm. and so i don't know that the 910 number was what they considered reasonable and I can tell you that I just had someone pay a delinquent payment and it's still on everybody's mind. So I think it's important to consider that. Okay, so this is Chuck. I don't know if I'm coming through to everybody, but- uh, Yeah, you are. Looks like uh, with that increase, you're- we're going to, if we do the four payment plan, it's going to end up being around two and a quarter, 230. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. That's yeah, it's, it's uh, about 225, a little over. And I can play with these. I can play with these numbers too. Um, uh, um, this is Ed. I think this is just going to be the beginning of a lot of difficult choices. Um, I just did some quick math one day and came up with basically with everything being cut down this year. Um, say the library, the fire departments, all that. You're looking, I believe, at a minimum of $50,000 that they're not going to be able to raise. So I think hang on to your hats, folks. You know, say just because they're going to, they're basically going to need some money. Um, I think asking these guys a thousand dollars a year is that's pretty steep. Um, I think I, I think there's going to be some tough choices ahead. Just a kind. I agree. And is it is it one penny that raises about eighteen thousand? Is that the? Yeah, it's in that ballpark. It's yeah. near twenty. Yeah. This is Frank again. Uh, we, Go the, ahead. The uh, informational meeting. The informational meeting that Mike discussed might be a good thing to do. Uh, nonetheless, and we're looking with that house that's being torn down. Is that was that two uh, additional uh, sewer fees that will be deleted from her bill because she might have had three units there. Yep. That's a question. Mm -hmm. It actually ends up only being one because she built the new house out back. So we gained one and now we're losing two. So we really are only losing one. How soon do we have to have this? Do we need to settle on this tonight, Julie? Or do we still have a little bit of time to get the... No, you don't need to. We don't need to settle on it. Um, it's... It's just, I, I was hoping to get built. I need 30 days before I can do a collection. The bills need to be postmarked 30 days before you can do the first collection. 
So I was trying to get all of the collection for this fiscal year done in this fiscal year, but we did it last time without spacing it out evenly. So it's probably fine to not space it out. Easily. And if, while you're looking at my screen, we can play with this number from transfers a little and see what happens. So if you look at F19, that's what the rate is for the year and F21 then would be the quarterly payment. So I can play with this number right now and you guys can see what it would do. Okay. What if, what if we went to somewhere like, if we could sneak up to like 800 or something, that's 46 bucks. That's a sizable increase, but still not 910 either, you know? Yeah, let's see. Wonder what that would tell us that we'd have to find from transfers. Fourteen. Fourteen thousand. Could we? How much? Do you know how much we have in the in the savings account for emergencies? The wastewater savings. Right. Is I think it's around fifty. Around wow, fifty. It might be 40 now that we did that transfer. I don't remember. Okay, because we paid the 10 for that other thing, for that study. Right. Okay. Okay, this is Chuck again. Mike, you remember the conversation that you had with us uh, a couple of weeks ago in regards to the uh, sewer plant, the expense that's going to be required? Right, we can be, we could be looking at a huge, I mean, uh, it's, it's most like, I mean, you would, you would get a 45% match, but we're still looking at a hundred thousand dollars on the, on the short side or 150, depending on which option we would go with. Um, but that's still all up in the air till we go the next step and we can go the next step without committing to anything, but then we could find out our funding and such to go the next and if the state deems that we've had enough trouble with that sewer plant it's possible they could fund 75 percent and the uh, usda would takes into consideration the the income of every user on that on that system and establishes our rate of in interest and such to pay the loan back so there's there's some benefits in the fact that by doing the upgrade on the sludge it should end up saving us some money but i don't know if it would quite save us as much as it would cost us to do the job depending on how long the loan was stretched out do and i don't know any of those numbers at this point i could try and find out but what but the the theory the the plan from the engineer says that we would be in two things instead of having the heavy sludge trying to run it back through the system it would be going and settling out and the fact that it would help make the rest of the system run better which should ease the sludge load settling out and then with the sludge going into a separate sludge tank we could decant it so that everything that we were shipping when it came time to ship the sludge would be straight sludge and not a water sludge mix like we're shipping now because we pay by gallon for that and and that would be a, a benefit too so we would be shipping in less sludge because we would be shipping the water and it should be working better to break break it down so there, there's benefits but i don't i don't know that there's any real accurate way of 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 really saying the the actual savings they could put a number on the savings so Right now, I'm thinking that 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 right there, you know, at, at 795, looks like about is is 
high of an increase as I could really feel comfortable asking. And I'm, I don't even like asking that, but looking at the numbers, it, it seems. But I just don't know, could we pull, pull that out of the other account to, to bail us out? You know, do we, do we put a line item down for asking, asking the town people to pay, um, you know, fifteen thousand dollars a year or something to offset the, offset the sewer cost in the town? I mean, it's, I don't know where you go. You know, like you say, it's one cent on your tax rate, but everything, everything is a part of the town, so. I guess at this point, I, I'm really not comfortable making this this decision right now. I, I I think I'd like to do some more investigation to see what else I can I can learn if we can wait one more cycle. Do you feel that would be okay if we waited one more cycle, Julie? Or yeah, I have to. I have to. We have to set tax rates at the next meeting, anyways. Okay. So we can try to do this then. Um, if you and I can do some emailing back and forth, I can play with this file and I can look okay. up our costs for sludge store or for sludge hauling from A1 and also from Rutland where they take the sludge because we have to pay for it on right. that end too. Yeah, we got truck in and gallon fees. So, okay. So maybe Let's... gathering that information and then I would have and I will make note of what we have in savings and have a more accurate number there too. Okay. Let's, let's work on that over the next, next um, stretch between the two meetings and I'll see if I can, maybe I can talk to some of the people from the state and get some in information on, on rates and such. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, I'm going to Stop sharing my screen and then Kristen, how do I make you the host? Oh, I see it. You're the host again. Oh, wow. Um, I'm now. Wow. Okay. And that was it um, for me. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Anybody else have any questions for Julie? Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Julie. Yep. Emergency, emergency management. Yes, this is Kristen and a report submitted from the Pollitt Emergency Management Director covering June of 2020 reads as following, um, COVID-19 updates continue to be posted daily to the Facebook page to keep residents informed. Participated in two conference calls this month with Vermont Emergency Management and other emergency entities submitted photos of two of the new culverts to the Vermont Emergency Management as part of the closure of the respective hazard mitigation grants. Bob Morlino. Excellent. What about health officer? So the Pilot Health Officer's monthly report for June 2020, investigated complaint of septic waste smell in storm sewer, investigated complaint of trash on property, followed up on asbestos testing at house demolition site and served a notice of intent to issue a health order, performed a rental housing code inspection on a multifamily dwelling, obtained an office number and ticket book for levying fines. Bob Morlino. Okay. Anybody got any questions or comments? Back to the wastewater again. I. I got that little information that I shared with you on, on the, the steps involved in, in going forward. And, and I asked, and I asked her, uh, Jenny Austin again about, about how this would affect our performance. And that little story that I just gave you was in essence, what she told me that, you know, the design, the design should improve the performance of the machines and, and you know, event save us money on the sludge hauling and stuff like that. So that's kind of where we're at. I, I'd really like to go forward with this because I think the next, if we go with the next step, according to the way I understand it, and I can confirm it, 
we we get the qualified qualifications go out and and then we can do a final design where we can look for the money and then if we get we can get the money to do everything we've done so far including the ten thousand dollars and if we choose not to do anything, we don't have to pay any of the money back. But if we do, if we do continue on with the job, we'll have to, we'll have to pay it back, but it would be rolled into the loan. So <laughs> that's where we're at with that. And uh, I'll just, I'll just keep talking and trying to figure out, but I, I think I need to review that again to see, see what, what we would do besides just ask, just having an official vote at the meeting to, to continue down. Or if you guys would like to, I could probably arrange for her to join us at the next meeting, the Zoom meeting, so you could have discussions and et cetera with her. Or we can talk about that and as we get closer to the meeting, I'll, I'll ask you if you uh, think it would be beneficial for for Jenny to join us at the meeting. So. And that's it for the wastewater plant. I haven't heard any other issues. Everything else seems to be going all right. So Kristen? There, did you have any interest? I just pulled up from Jill. Um, she had emailed us last week, um, the, the VTEMS operations updates for the Pollet wastewater treatment facility for May and June. I didn't Did you read them, to... but if you would read that, please. It's a yeah, it's a pretty quick just overview. Um, so these are the VTOMS operations updates for the Pollet Wastewater Treatment Facility for May 2020 and June 2020. In addition, the submissions for the June DMR submitted today, which was July 6th, and second quarter residuals are attached for your use. Unfortunately, the motor replacement for the circle chart recorder did not do the trick. The cost to replace the board versus the entire recorder are about the same, which is $1,300. Please advise if we are approved to order the replacement. A copy of the quote from USA Blue Book is attached, which I can forward to everybody. I didn't. Um, that slipped my mind, but they do, they, knew, they do need to get that chart recorder fixed. Okay. And I can't even remember exactly if it charts the logs of pumps. I believe it's a flow. It's logging the flow. So it's important to monitor and, and such. Okay. But if any if nobody has any any uh objections, I'll we can send her a, a message to go ahead and order that that uh chart recorder for thirteen hundred. necessary equipment so there are no objections um if you could send that to her kristen that we we authorized her to go ahead and order that do you want to make a motion does someone want to make a motion so we have it for the minutes i guess it's over it's over our limit so that's right chuck is, is that you want to make a motion to get the chart recorder I'll make a motion that we get the chart recorder for the waste treatment plant. Okay. Do I have a second? How about you, Bob? Yeah, that's fine, Mike. This is Bob. All right. All in favor? Ed? I Yes. John? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Bob? Yes. Thank you. Approved. Okay, um, and then the rest of the report, so future priorities, status of manhole covers, has pavement been removed and risers added, question mark? I think Keith has got some of it done. Did you just order what you needed, Keith, or did you order extras? I ordered, I've got extras at the pit, Mike, and I've got most of them located. Um, okay. And um, some of the ones that I was most concerned about didn't turn out to be as bad because they are not under the blacktop. <clears throat> uh, there's okay. one in Irwin Whitehot's driveway, one in Ron Taylor's driveway, one by the cedar trees in front of Gaishel's house, 
those that yeah. are not in the black top. So okay. there's one that I have not yet found, which goes beyond spruce gum into the backyards of those three houses, uh, Debbie Waite's old house. And the, I guess one was the McAuliffe house. And there's three of them that go into a manhole there that I haven't located yet. But the only yeah, really? risers that I put on are the ones that we, uh, the ones that they operated on, when they had the issue on the end of, of uh, Euclid Street. Okay. Good. Thank you. So I can tell her that yes, or that we're in the process. Yeah, good. In the process. Thank you, Kate. Um, next, this is Kristen. So next up, replace air valve near the end of Force Main from Spruce Gum Pump Station. Mm -hmm. Spruce Gum Pump Station repair and replace Pump One. Next sludge pumping scheduled for 716 for 16,000 gallons. Recommended jetting of collection system to get rid of solids building up to prevent future unwelcome clogs. Recommended vacuum and pressure washing clean out of basement tankage to remove many years of organic loadings from influent structures through septic tanks, openings and aeration basins to prevent future heavy loadings and clogs possibly do this in late July or September in conjunction with pumping recommended above. And lastly, discuss sludge holding feasibility study and putting out RFQ for next steps slash funding eligibility. Okay. I See, am probably, sorry, probably the jetting and stuff will, I'll talk to her about, but I think we probably need to kind of hang on that a little bit to get, get ourselves a little bit better squared away. Um, and you all have that, we'll have that in your inboxes now so you can <laughs> review all of the attachments and whatnot. And while we're on the sewer thing, did I sent you a, a copy of an email that I got from Jonas and her were talking about the Cindy Lake. I think that kind of explains. So... Looks like um, so it looks like they're still kind of working that out. Um, Jonas reached out to Jill, and Jill went on to say that she believes the proper protocol for an abandoned sewer service lateral would be to dig back and cap it. It may also be required for one of our operators to witness this disconnect to protect the system, assure it is sanitary and allow the bill to discontinue. I will discuss this with Mike, the town of Pollock Select Board Chair to see what the town would like for us to do. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to her about that. I'll give her a call right off and then, how did Judy Leg, uh, Judy Leg reach out to us? Cindy Leg um, sent, Cindy I think she Leg, was, yeah. Cindy, yeah, she, sure. I believe I got an email from Julie letting us know, letting me know that she would be interested in, she reached out to Julie and then Julie let her know that we would be meeting and would discuss okay. it. Okay, so then Julie, do you know, how did she reach out, out to you? She, she said that is correct. She called. Okay. So I'll, we'll have to get their phone call, phone number or something like that. That'll be, I can, I think I can figure that out. So, all right, I'll talk to Jill this week and, and get a plan so that she can, they can arrange to dig them out and then Jill can have her operator witness the actual capping so that, and I don't know if that lateral line is, is, is one lateral line that goes into that house and splits once it gets in the house or if it's two, but it was a duplex that she's taken down, so I we'll have to figure that out too, so. Okay, I'll work through that with Jill. Is Keith still present? Yes, yes I am. Uh, the jump over by the Catholic Church. Uh, any idea when uh, Fuller is going to address that issue, Keith? 
No, I have not got a confirmed date yet, no, Chuck. But we are on the docket to get it done, and that's all I've known at this point. So, um, And when I do find out, it probably may only be a couple days' notice. So I can check. Yeah, that's fine. Find so... Okay. Thank you. Anything else under, let's see, I guess we're in old business. So this is Kristen. The first item, um, first of all, Deb's having troubles with her audio, but Deb, ha um, Mike, Deb has Cindy's number that she can forward to you. Okay, excellent. And she Great. also said thank you to you all following the review of her memo. So... That was a little bit belated, but I wanted to be sure to pass it along. Um, also, so for older unfinished business, the first item that I had added to the agenda was the update on Elizabeth Gibson's current position. So I reached out to the VLCT regarding, I, I looked into it at first, I thought maybe for a brief moment that like the information officer was an appointment thing, but it's not, I checked. Um, in which case it would have been great. We could have just appointed somebody, but um, it didn't work out that way. So I believe that, and Julie might be able to confirm this, that Elizabeth is an independent contractor in that the town just pays her directly. This is Julie. That is accurate. Thank you. And Sarah currently is an employee of the town. So if she were to continue at the library as an employee of the town, she would be paid then she would be paid on accounts payable as a contractor for website stuff if she was hired as a contractor. And it's also important to note, um, and I meant to send you guys this, but um, contractors for the town need to have their own workers comp liability insurance coverage if they don't then we have to cover that is considered part of our, our payroll when we do our workers' comp insurance audit, and we have to pay that insurance on them. Like, for example, Dave Hosley, who does our mowing, doesn't have that coverage on himself. And because of that, we ended up having a workers' comp audit where we have to now pay like $2,000 more in insurance. And it would have only been like 641. So that's the thing to consider when you hire independent contractors too. <clears throat> so uh, this is it. I thought they had to give a what uh, no proof of insurance before. They do, Ed. They have to give a proof of insurance, but it doesn't necessarily. We don't require them to have specifics in insurance. Or if we do, then we haven't been enforcing it. Like they have liability to cover if his tractor hits a car. Okay. But it's not workers' compensation. So that if he then were injured and couldn't work, is he covered by some sort of insurance policy? And because he's not, even though he's not on our payroll, he is considered for workers' compensation insurance purposes on our payroll. What is, um, do you know what Elizabeth is currently, her situation is currently offhand? She didn't ring any bells. So either she was under the limit that we have to issue a 1099 or she, um, or she had that insurance, but she wasn't on my list that the workers comp audit pr provided me with problem children. Because when she provided a breakdown of, of when Elizabeth provided to the board a breakdown of her costs, I, it was not overly high. So it might, I'm wondering if it might be beneath the limit, but that's the limit is $600. Oh, then. But this is, this is Frank because the insurance questions come up. Could I ask a question? What's that, Frank? Uh, typically in the audit reporting forms, 
if the person is a legitimate contractor, they can be excluded from being rated on the policy, even though, and, and the other employees are still listed, but this contractor would still have to be listed as to what the receipts were and some evidence showing a contract was in place and that this person was a true contractor. Um, there's criteria around that. The legislature's tried to simplify it, but you really can't very well. So the, um, the if you guys get advice from the League and City and Towns in regards to workers' comp question in a contractor or? Frank, our insurance is all through the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Right, right. All the information workers comes from that. Comp work, workers' comp is governed by law. <laughs> follow the law. They don't make up their own law. So you have to clarify either with them or with the insurance department, which would have an expert on this on hand regards to the contractor employee relationship and document everything in writing one way or the other. And then you're protected because if you don't have it straightened out, it can be a royal mess because one of the things com workers' compensation does is it provides uh, workers, it's workers' compensation and employers' liability, which prevents uh, the employee from suing the employer unless there's gross negligence of a different kind, which has to be a higher degree of negligence. And this, this, is a, this, this protects the town from a lawsuit because your general liability policy, I'm not being a consultant here because I haven't read your policy, but all general liability policies generally exclude any condition which warrants workers' compensation coverage to be included on an individual. So this would mean that uh, that the town, if there is, if, if and it's on a case by case basis, if you're going to court, typically what you would, I'm not being given legal advice either, but the uh, typically what would happen is the uh decision would be made then as to whether it was an employee okay the, the league directs us on all these insurance questions frank so so we'll we'll be back in touch with them in regard to this as we as we determine how the how the status has to be for this so okay thank you for your input on that frank so um this is kristen this, again so what I think needs to be considered is basically bottom line is if we are going to be hiring somebody for this position, it, it would behoove us to, as a town, to advertise for it. Um, while it's not required legally that one puts out an equal opportunity advertisement for an independent contractor, it just is the right move as A, it just allows us to open the pool for any sort of you know, people that are capable of the position and also down the road, it would prevent anybody from saying that the town chose, favor, you know, the town, the town showed favoritism and did not allow other people the opportunity to pursue the role. So if the town decides to openly do that, that would be something smart, unless you want to reallocate the responsibilities to somebody else. Mike, this Julie. is Harry. Can I make a comment? Sure. I tend to agree. <laughs> I tend to agree with uh, Kristen that I think we should advertise for the position. Uh, I I think where we, what we need to do is have a, a website that works and somebody who understands the program in which the or the platform in which the website was was written um, to try to maintain it properly. I don't think it's just something we should give somebody who maybe not have the experience. I think if we can advertise for somebody who works as an independent contractor or a consultant and um, has experience with um, um, was a WordPress that our website is done in, and so does got the, got considerable experience in WordPress and has uh, a good portfolio of work that they've done. I think it's going to behoove us to work with somebody like that rather than just giving it to uh, to somebody locally. Okay, Can thank I you. Make a Julie. Comment, Julie. Um, 
please Another do. Another thing too. that would benefit us as far as advertising would be to reach out to the league insurance auditor and ask her what, um, what we should ask people to have for in coverage yeah. and then including that in our advertisement. Yeah, good point. Thank you. That's a good point. I would be happy to work with Elizabeth on uh, getting a uh, very short form RFP together if you'd like. Uh, that would be great with me. Is everybody else in favor of that? One thing we haven't determined uh, is pay rate and how it matches and fits in with our other employees and the structure. Well, well right, now, right now the budget has, uh, was it $3,550 a year in the fiscal, uh, current fiscal year? for the website and a newsletter. Okay. So we could actually, we could either leave that out of the RFP or indicate that that's the range we want to be in. Okay. Um, Go ahead, Kristen. This is Kristen. Harry, I have had some communications with Elizabeth regarding her some cost breakdown as well as what some of her responsibilities have been. So I can also send that to you as well to maybe avoid her having to double type. And yeah. I'll also, I mean, I'm happy to work with you guys too on it. Um, That'd be great. The board kind of figures out great. which direction you'd like to go with the position. Are we good with having Harry and Elizabeth and Kristen work on our RFP? Okay, that sounds like sounds like a yes to me, Harry. So thank you. <laughs> it wasn't a no. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and then the uh, just the one other item, which I think falls under old business, um, would be. Ed, the countryside alarm quote. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, you want to tell us about that, Ed? Oh, um, well, how about you? <laughs> Thank you. I don't, uh, Kristen. Do you have? Do you want me to? Do you want me to? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, Karen Gates from Countryside Alarms uh, and sent along. A quote put together by Mike Blaze regarding the cameras for the town office in the garage. And if everything looks satisfactory, simply reply that we are good to move ahead and we will get the paperwork and scheduling underway. Any questions, feel free to reach out to the office. Um, and I just have to open the PDF. They probably want to know the figures. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on opening that up. And... As you inch closer to the edge of your seat. Um, <laughs> so, so I have designed a system around HD cameras for an improved coverage design. During the past 36 months, Honeywell Performance NVRs have made improvements in product and due to our distributorship, pricing has come down. Honeywell has made available a 2TB hard drive NVR unit in addition, the warranty on equipment is one year over the counter and three years repaired. Attached is a proposal based on the Honeywell Performance DVR system with internal hard drive. This NVR has four camera capacity with storage space being priced with 2TB. Building will require an internet connection. The NVR will also have the ability to be accessed either by iPad, iPhone, or Droid smartphone. One Honeywell channel Four channel HEN flat screen service monitor includes internet connection software and remote viewing software for multiple machine operation, a power supply protector, HD4 MP4K color dome camera installed wall mount outside above entry door and inside common office area. Wiring will require some surface wire mold. DVR will, will, will require internet service and the equipment installed would cost 
$1,959. Sorry, not $1,959. So is there one at the town garage? That's also? A, that's, a, that's a second page. Also. There, I think that was 1300 and something for a camera. Yes. So the yeah. next one, yes, the next one would be 1364 and any additional cameras would be 595. So you're looking at Do we have anything in our budget, Julie, where that can come from? Honestly, I didn't look. Uh, we have the we always have the building. Building maintenance. Yeah. You're looking at like $3,300. If you did those. both. If you did both, yeah. And is there anything like a monthly fee that we would have to pay or they just put those cameras in and, and then they're just there all the time and they run through and. You know, he didn't include that and I'm sorry, I did not ask him that on a monthly fee. So that may be another, that's certainly another question is delve into it a little deeper on additional cost. Yeah. It may just be that once they install the cameras, they just run through and you got so long before you, before it just records over. But it, it just seems like a very good idea for cameras to be in both places, in my opinion. This is Julie. Well, I guess if we, um, I think it would make people feel better to have cameras. Absolutely. Most definitely. The only thing I would say about budgeting, um, luckily we have, our buildings are all painted. We could skimp a little there if we had to, to, to find this money. There are some- Yeah, I- we could we could do to get it at least in the town hall and he did say that he should be able to have that in by the primary if we want to head on, on it and i guess it probably wouldn't matter it doesn't really matter whether we do them both at, at once or not so i don't think so but there again that's another right um, So the they, thing is, um, this is Chuck. I have another question, Ed, that you might want to ask. Are they motion de uh, detected uh, operated? How, okay, yeah, how do they operate? In other words, a town barn, uh, somebody, somebody pulls in and gets out of their vehicle and goes to the open door on the equipment uh, side of the garage. Is, is If you're walking by the camera, does motion activate it? That would be my question. I'm a I would suspect they do, Chuck. Um, we got some cameras like that at work in different areas, and, and they, whenever there's any, they have a sensor range that turns them on and off whenever something occurs. Um, I know of one, I know of one house that, and I'm sure there's plenty more, that when you pull in, it comes on, and they can even speak to you over the speaker, over the camera. You know, so it seems like there's there's a couple more questions that you could ask Ed, but we we and then that'll give Julie a little bit of time to see where we could get the funds and okay. maybe next next meeting we can vote on it. But it would seem like a a prudent a prudent idea to me, especially to have it in installed before the the elections. What does anybody else think? This is Julie. I just have, if we wait two weeks, are we going to get it in for the primaries? Because if we wait two weeks, then the primaries are at the beginning of August. Okay. It doesn't give the same amount of time to them. Oh, to it, 
It wouldn't do it for the primary, but it would it would be in for the general election. Okay, so the questions you've got are, can we do one at a time? Um, and monthly fee, and how do they operate? Yes. Last date he needs to know by to get it in. By uh, last date to install before primary. And that's the 11th, isn't it? At the 11th of August. Yeah, that would be that would be pretty tight, but but this stuff usually goes in pretty quick. It's pretty pretty quick. Oh yeah, they. It doesn't take them long to do it if they can fit it in their schedule. Exactly. That's the that's the key. So. Okay. So hopefully we can have have some good answers and uh, and act on this next next meeting and, and get it all in, in time. That would be great in my opinion. So anything else under old business or? Uh, Mike, uh, this is Harry yeah. again. Yeah, sorry. Um, the the, um, the uh, Steve Schwab um, artwork yes. that's on display, I didn't hear a, any final decision from the select board on we how, to, con how to consider what was The only thing we got was, oh, Kristen? I was just going to add, this is Kristen. He, it looks like Jonas, he, Jonas sent something along and it was an email chain, but it looked like Steve was going to be typing something up to right. summarize their points that they, from a discussion that they had had regarding the fact that it's temporary artwork rather than signs. And I think that's all. I, I would just like, I would just like to, uh, throw in a comment that, you know, there, you know, there are a number of people in town or come into town or buy in the town and uh, erect structures that are clearly in our uh, bylaws that indicate a permit is needed. So it, just to call what, what uh, he calls artwork, but looks like a sign, uh, just artwork and temporary uh, doesn't exclude the fact that he's erected the artwork with uh, disregard to the zoning uh, requirements. So not that I object to what he's done. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a nice idea, but the fact is, uh, even if you're gonna do it and it's a nice idea, you still have to comply with the zoning ordinances. Okay, thank you, Harry. But at this point, we haven't got any information regarding anything or decision to be made from the zoning administrator, so. Right, okay. Anything um, else we got cooking the, here? Yeah, the, the only thing, other thing I have, uh, if I could, uh, Chris and I, I now uh, emailed you that sketch, that one page. Uh, do you wanna share your screen with, with everybody and just so they can see it? So I zoom from a different computer than what <laughs> I like do all my emails on so that I can make sure we don't have yeah. any fatal errors and get cut <laughs> out. Right. I, I do the same thing. Um, but what I can do is just, I will forward the email along to everybody. Okay. Not that that's any good for instant gratification, but I will do that. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Okay, thank you. Um, um, anything, nothing else under old businesses here, Kristen? Or? Not that I had anything no. under anything under new. No, not for me. <laughs> okay, so now we got public comment, I guess. I did. This is Kristen. Kristen. I did have um, one item that I didn't say under announcements, but and I know. John mentioned it, but the governor has extended the state of emergency through the middle of August, through August 15th. Um, so just so everybody knows regarding, we are still in compliance with the open meeting laws during the state of emergency due to COVID-19. Two more Zoom meetings then, huh? 
we get a couple more Zoom meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and then okay. we'll all be reminded that we all have legs still when we're in person. <laughs> okay, um, Frank had a comment there about this. I'm just going to relay a comment from several people talking on the street in West Pollock about okay. a temporary fix maybe to that culvert up there by uh, in Spruce Gum by the Catholic Church where it's sinking and, and you got to yeah. slow down to almost like a crawl. You go through there and nobody and somebody who doesn't know it's there is going to get get gets whacked and uh, and if they lose control of a vehicle going through there for some reason breaking a tie rod or breaking something then it's going to be an issue so it should be smoothed out and kept that way until you have the major it's, it's in the process out. we've we've arranged with a contractor so we're at his mercy so as soon as he can fit it in his schedule he's going to deal with that issue and and then we'll be in good shape. Right, Chuck? Oh, yeah, that's correct. But I can tell you that uh, you don't want to go across that uh, much more than five miles an hour. Mm -hmm. I agree. Tough. Any more public comment? Hearing that, I make a motion that we adjourn. Well, thank you very much, Chuck. I'll second that. Second that motion, Ed. All in favor? Ed? Yes. John? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Bob? Yes. Approved. All right. All right. Good night. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Good Have a good night. Good night, everyone.